and welcome back to Spacelab. This video is about the optional MPEG-H exporter plugin that you can use with Spacelab. This video is part of a larger ongoing series about Spacelab and 3D audio production, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date with the latest news, tips, and tricks. This exporter plugin can be downloaded from our website and works with both Spacelab Ignition and Spacelab Interstellar. It offers the same features regardless of which version of Spacelab you happen to use. To be able to follow this tutorial, you'll need to understand how to use Spacelab as well as the basics of what MPEG-H is. If you're not familiar with MPEG-H yet, please have a look at the excellent resources provided on the Fraunhofer Institute's website. There's a link in the description. At its core, the MPEG-H exporter is a plugin that produces an MPEG-H master file. What's great about the MPEG-H exporter is that you can produce a master file in any DAW, even if higher channel counts are not supported by your DAW's mixing engine. This is because the audio and metadata are transmitted directly from your Spacelab instances to the MPEG-H exporter without having to go through the host. It's important to mention here that only one instance of the MPEG-H exporter can be running at any time. This plugin should be instantiated on your DAW's master output because it must be the last stop in the mixing chain. Having the MPEG-H exporter running at the end of your signal path ensures that all Spacelab instances are processed properly in time before the MPEG-H exporter, which is what we want. Now in the GUI of the exporter plugin, you'll see two columns. The first column contains a list of your Spacelab instances. You can and really should give each instance a unique name to be able to distinguish it. You can do this from within the MPEG-H exporter itself, or you can also do this from each Spacelab instance right below the output meters. Now, if we go back to the MPEG-H exporter, we can see that each Spacelab instance needs to be connected to the exporter individually. To do this, just click the Connect button. If an instance is not connected to the MPEG-H exporter, that instance works normally, just as if the MPEG-H exporter is not present in that session. When you connect a Spacelab instance to the MPEG-H exporter, the following things happen. First, the connected Spacelab instance no longer outputs audio to your DAW. That audio is instead sent directly to the MPEG-H exporter. Ooh, and if you're really out there, it's really you. Then what's the road that leads me to? If you're really out there, it's really you. Show me the road that leads me to. Second, the output speaker layout in that connected Spacelab instance is switched to the format which is selected as bed layout in the right window of the MPEG-H exporter. If binauralizer is switched on in your instance of Spacelab, it will be deactivated. You will not be able to change the output speaker layout or switch on the binauralizer from any Spacelab instance that is connected to the MPEG-H exporter. All connected Spacelab instances have mute and solo buttons for monitoring purposes. When selecting a connected Spacelab instance from the list, all sources of that instance are shown in the Sources column. Each source can either be exported to the selected bed layout or as a separate object. If you choose not to separate the source, both dry and wet signals are mixed into the bed. If you do separate the source, things are rendered a little differently. The wet reverb part of the sound still goes to the bed, but the dry part of the sound is added to the scene as individual objects. This means that the positional metadata and the audio of the separated objects is transmitted from Spacelab to the MPEG-H exporter, and there it is added as separate objects to the scene. If the position of these sources is automated in Spacelab, the changing metadata is also transmitted to the exporter and is written into the output file when exporting. So, to separate a source, click the Separate button. A window appears letting you select for which output format you want to have the source separated. We'll talk more about the export formats later in this video, but as you can see, the separate sources can be muted or soloed for monitoring purposes. On the right side, you'll see a window for setting your export option. The first parameter to adjust is monitoring layout. Here you can select what layout you want to use to monitor through the MPEG-H exporter. Note that this is just for monitoring and this setting does not affect the export itself. 
If you select binaural, you'll be able to use the binauralizer, which is integrated into the MPEG-H exporter as part of MPEG-H. Note that this binauralizer is different from Space Lab's internal binauralizer. Below that, you'll find the export settings. It's highly recommended to configure your scene from top to bottom, starting with the export format. There are two formats available, ADM with up to 24 objects and MPF with up to 15 objects. ADM is recommended if you are producing immersive or interactive music. MPF should be used if you need compatibility with SDI for broadcast applications. Now you can configure the other export parameters such as bed layout, reference layout, and separate sources individually for each of the export formats in the same session. When you switch between the export formats, you'll notice that these parameters will switch accordingly. Next, we have bed layout. Scenes in the MPEG-H exporter consist of a basic channel layout called a bed and additional objects. Technically, the exporter renders the bed as a bunch of objects, but their position is determined by the selected layout. The LFE will not be rendered and therefore is not included in the MPEG-H output. Spacelab then renders everything onto the selected bed layout, except, of course, for the dry sound of the separated objects that we discussed earlier. Although you can select any available speaker layout as a bed, for maximum compatibility, we recommend sticking to one of the options in the MPEG-H subfolder. The next option is called Reference Layout. If you're not sure what this is, we recommend setting it to the 7.1 plus 4H for the broadest possible compatibility. Below the reference layout is a display that shows how many of the available objects are used by the bed layout and by separate sources. The sum of both of these cannot exceed the maximum allowed by your selected export format. If your MPEG-H scene is not valid, you'll see a red show error button that appears on screen. Clicking this button opens a window showing you the list of errors. You'll need to resolve all open issues before you can export. Once you've done this, the error button disappears and you can proceed. Since MPEG-H is an object-based format, you cannot simply use the export function of your host software to produce an MPEG-H output. Instead, the MPEG-H exporter plugin will write the MPEG-H file to disk. To do this, you first need to tell the exporter the points at which you want to start and stop exporting. Only the content inside this region will actually be exported. Let's set the in and out point. If you have selected MPF as your export format, two additional options become visible. The first lets you choose between 50 Hz and 59.94 Hz. And the second option lets you set the audio bit depth. After setting everything up, you are ready to export. If you have set up both export formats, you can export one after the other. Now let's have a look at the export process. If there are no errors in your scene, you'll be able to click the export button. A window will appear asking where you want to save the output file. Select the location, set a name, and click save. Now you're in export mode. The display to the right of the export button becomes active, showing the current position, that the plugin is ready for export, and finally an abort button that lets you exit export mode and return to normal operation. With this plugin, you can either do real time online export or offline export. To export successfully, you'll need to start your playback or bounce before the in point and stop it after the out point. The easiest way to do this is just to press play and let it run through. During export, no audio is passing through the exporter plugin. As soon as the endpoint is reached during playback, a percentage indicator appears, letting you know how much has been exported. After passing the out point, the export is finalized and the MPEG-H master file is written to disk. The plugin then returns automatically to normal operation. The process is very similar when bouncing offline. Just put the plug into export mode as described before, and then do the bounce starting before the endpoint and stopping after the out point.
At the top of the GUI, you'll see a bypass button. Since audio from the connected Spacelab instances is going directly to the exporter, you would not hear anything from these instances in case you bypass the exporter using the bypass function of your host software. That is because the Spacelab instances are still connected to the exporter and have no idea that the exporter has been bypassed in the host. Really out there, it's really you. Show me. For that reason, you should use the bypass function of the exporter instead of the one in your host. If bypass is on, all connected Spacelab instances are temporarily disconnected and their outputs are routed to the host instead. Also, when bypass is switched on, the exporter will let all incoming audio pass through. This makes it easy to compare how it sounds with and without the MPEG-H exporter processing the output of Spacelab. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of any updates. Thanks for watching and happy mixing.